7 p.m. local time, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and thank you for joining Viewpoint on DBS Television. It is your weekend edition, of course. Uh, today's edition, we are having Galim Derrick. He is a pan-Africanist. He is not new. He has always been there. And today he will be with us again for another 26 to 30 minutes of the program to talk about issues uh, concerning the Anglophone crisis. And of course, Galim Derrick, good evening and thank you very much for joining us. Good evening, Vanessa. Thank you for inviting. It's a pleasure always having you on set. Manga Venashus, good evening and a happy week start, probably. Good evening, Vanessa, and good evening to our viewers. It's a pleasure that uh, we succeeded to come to the end of the, the week. We have actually succeeded. And uh, just stay put at home, watch us and enjoy, be educated and be informed. First of all, let us take the first part of the show. That is the question, yes or no, question and answer. Once more, welcome back. Let us take our first question. Is the international community responsible for the increase of violence in the crisis northwest and southwest regions? Derek, yes or no? Yes. Mange Venashus? Yes, Vanessa. Yes. And the last question, is there anything the civilian population can do for the crisis to end? Derek, I begin with you. It's a no. There is nothing. Mange Venashus? Yes, Vanessa, I think they have something. They have something. Uh, let us take a second part of the show that is the debate. Derek, you think that uh, the international community is responsible for the increase of uh, violence in the crisis region, that is the northwest and the southwest region. But uh, what actually justify your points? Because uh, we all know how the international community has been trying to mediate uh, to solve the crisis in these regions between the government and the separatist fighters. We all know how they have been coming out condemning the atrocities taking place in this region and uh, putting pressure, mounting pressure on the government to see into it that the crisis comes to an end. But yet, you think that uh, they are responsible in fueling the crisis, in aggravating the crisis? I'm convinced the international community is fueling the crisis rather than making efforts to solve it. You'll bear with me if there is a fire outbreak and uh, I stand and acknowledge the fact that there is a fire burning and no efforts are made to quench the fire. It would have been a kind of letting it happen. And if I let it happen when I could do something, the responsibility is in my hands. And when you look at uh, Article 40 of the UN Charter, it spells out clearly how conflict resolution is supposed to take place. And after the Cold War, it was a responsibility of the UN. They took it upon themselves to ensure international justice and security by stepping in timely to secure human loss of human life. Yes. And the procedure had a lot in place. In the first place, they talked of negotiations. Negotiations, it's different when I say I support a negotiation process than engaging in the process itself. I may support the fact that there should be negotiation for 100 years. But if I never come to see to it that negotiations take place, I don't think I've contributed positively in resolving an issue. And it's the first thing that is supposed to be done before the Security Council can step in. And if that cannot happen, then conciliation is supposed to come in, where a commission is supposed to be put in place to bring their own efforts to table to solve a situation but we should keep in mind here that whatever proposals that such a commission brings they have no binding character and therefore they must just enlighten or try to expose the things that need to be done and after that there is supposed to be some mediation i would say the swiss their organization they have put a lot in place to see to it that they stand ready and available to 
mediate in this conflict but we know the two parties are not available there is something we may not have all the understanding politics is so i mean shrouded in a lot of uncertainties that we don't know who is on ready to mediate or whatsoever but a mediation is supposed to take care of that but there are several things that could hinder a mediation could it be because facts are not clearly understood and if it happens that facts are not clearly understood then the un was supposed to have put in place an, a, a commission, a commission of, of, inquiry. of inquiry and the commission is out to elucidate facts to expose them make them as understandable as possible you know it was born in the hague in 1899 the commission of inquiry and it first looked into a case of manchuria of 1931 and it, it made things so clear that the conflict was settled without any delay but i don't think the case of the northwest and southwest here could be delayed because of maybe a lack of understanding of the facts on the ground because history is so clear on on it I think it's just bad will or lack of readiness. Maybe it could be due to corruption or some other influences, political influences. But the case of the Northwest and Southwest are so clear that one cannot be begin to think that the delay is because the facts are not clearly understood. And if that could not work, then arbitration is supposed to come in. With arbitration, some umpire or a tribunal could come in to put things in place following the law and this is other than the international court of justice is some court like the abuja high court or some other court that could put things in in place and it's after such a court has failed to resolve a conflict or a crisis situation like what we are going through that the justice the judicial settlement or adjudication can come in now when we talk of adjudication it's the international court of justice, justice that is supposed to come in place to do what is supposed to be done and you know anything the international court of justice says is binding to the conflicting parties there are no two there are no two ways out of it but now if all possible peaceful ways of resolving the conflict have failed then the Security Council is supposed to come in. This is when the Security Council enjoys a certain dictatorial power that is given to it. It's supposed to step in and impose a military solution, military intervention to solve the two cases. But like I said, there is some lack of will along the way, which the international community, in my judgment, is to be blamed for. In the crisis. Normally, if a tree is sick, right, you don't jump into pruning the branches. The first thing to do when a tree is sick, either you trace the sickness mm -hmm. to the stem in case where, where it has been cut or, from? or wounded, mm -hmm. or you go down to the root. Someday in here, I used the expression Sanasio in Radice. Mm -hmm. If a tree is sick, you don't prune. You only prune a healthy tree to make it produce better fruit. But a sick tree cannot be pruned. What is happening now with the case of Northwest and Southwest are just efforts to prune branches of a tree. You, you know, if we silence boy, this thing may come to an end. If we silence Batibo, this thing may come to an end. If Labia Lem is down, this thing may come to an, to an end. But it is the wrong process. It is the wrong procedure. In all of this, there is loss of property, loss of human life and whatnot then if you look at it why i insist that there is bad will if the international court of justice passes a resolution it is supposed to be implemented and if it's by not both parties by both parties mm -hmm. and if it's not implemented and the international court of justice the un the african union they remain silent then it's cooperative injustice look at it w what happened after the the court ruling of the ICC where uh, on May 20, 2010 the 64th president of the general the UN General Assembly Ali Triki <coughs> when he came to Yaoundé he handed two beautifully embellished maps to the president of the Republic in Yaoundé the first one was the map of the Republic of Cameroon 
with international boundaries separating Cameroon and the British Southern Cameroons, now Ambazonia. And the second map was a map of the British Southern Cameroons with an international boundary separating the British Southern Cameroons, now Ambazonia, with the British Northern Cameroons. And the instructions were clear. Follow the boundaries of your country as at independence. What were the two maps for? Because a ruling was passed and it was expected that it should be implemented. The ruling was supposed to have been put in place. Why has the international community remained silent and not followed up to make sure that what they decided was implemented properly? That is what brings us to where we are right now. No, I, I, know, I, know. I cannot, CRTV reported the issue of the two maps. I, I, can, I can remember, recall the, the, the voices of George Ewane and Ephraim Bandagogomo on that day when George Ewane mentioned it and Bandagogomo was like, what did you just say? And Ewane, knowing the power of what did you just say, he decided to let sleeping dogs lie. lie. And he, he definitely knew what would have happened to him. And the last thing we heard was the voice of Ali Triki. We said, l'histoire en a décidé. But why has it not been put in place? That is a question which stands to be answered. And on the basis of which I still insist that the international community is responsible for the chaos that is going on in the Northwest and the Southwest now. Look at it. If their justice system had come into place, there is what we call commutative or distributive justice. Giving to each party what is their due. Yeah, due. They know what the competing parties are out are after. Right? So what stops them? from letting each person have what they really want. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Derek. We are still with you, still on the same question. But for the meantime, let us get uh, the viewpoint of Manga Vinashius. Manga, you equally think that uh, away from uh, uh, supporting the negotiations rather than engaging in need, rather than using arbitration and uh, cooperative uh, justice, the end, uh, quoting uh, Derek from the point he brought out, you still think that uh, the international community is uh, highly responsible for foiling the crisis. Yes, Vanessa. When when you look at the crisis that is, is already getting to four years, uh, we are where we are because of the international, you know, community. We we'll call it that way. Because uh, before 1914, we knew of Cameroon. I mean, Cameroon with a K. And at the at the time, it was one. The, the, the Europeans came to Africa with their colonization policies, with their world war, and after the world war, we, they split Cameroon to be in two uh, 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 parts. And after that, they granted independence the way they granted it, which history has it. But then the problem is, they have a say in what is going on in Cameroon. They know what can be done, like uh, Mr. Angalim was explaining, that chronology, the, 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 the order, the procedure, procedure. Mm -hmm. yes, to be followed when it comes to crisis uh, management, nothing is happening. And with the increase in violence that we have in the Northwest and Southwest regions, I remember when the Minister of Communication reacted last week, he called on friendly nations, f friendly nations, nations that are you know, they, 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 they are friends of Cameroon to cooperate with Cameroon to make sure that they should handle this crisis. Which means it is another way of calling for the involvement of the international community. Cameroon is a signatory to a number of, tra uh, of treaties signed with international organizations. And by so doing, they intrinsically link these international uh, organizations to the oh, affairs yes. of Cameroon in as much as they oblige Cameroonians to or Cameroon to 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 to, to so respect Cameroon enjoy certain immunity of course mm -hmm. yes now when issues are going on in Cameroon we expect this international communities or organization to react pay the, the 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 you know the standing orders of their organization but we've heard nothing when when atrocities started in the ongoing crisis we have the condemnation of uh, this foreign nation of this international community, non-governmental organizations, but what have they been doing? Vanessa, if we are where we are, take Britain, 
take France, we sit together with Cameroon, they can resolve this crisis. Because we are where we are, because, you know, when Fran uh, Britain and France emerged from the First World War as victors, they decided to partition Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And when they partitioned Cameroon, they brought Cameroon to where we are today. So they can sit down with Cameroon and negotiate. I don't think that if France have to sit and, 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 and Britain sits and they're telling us, this is what is, this is what is, this is what is. I mean, they have it. They know it. They have the, doc the documented fact of the history of Cameroon. But then they are saying nothing. Somebody said it. It is because of their unselfish, you know, interest that they have, they, they want to, pres uh, to, to preserve. Because they know if they should come to mediate. In the case, you, you know Cameroon, have been receiving, Cameroon has been receiving a, a, a delegations or receiving envoys from ambassadors, ambassadors mm -hmm. coming in. We, we are ready to assist Cameroon. We are, for how long are we going to assist Cameroon when people are dying? For how long are we going to assist Cameroon in looking for a solution for this crisis? Whereas the crisis is mutating by day. Changing faces, taking the, twi the, 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 the you know, ugly twist that we already have it. Nothing. Nobody is saying anything. So I think that the international community, they have a, a, a saying in what we are. I was, I was saying something here the other day. Uh, when you look at those who are in charge of, you know, promoting the violence in the northwest and southwest regions, they are not in Cameroon. Okay, most what of them are in the diaspora. They are in out they, they, they are abroad. Mm -hmm. What is the international community doing? We've had cases in some other countries, in some other regions of the world, where such uh, people, you know, they are given, you know, the, they, they are talking of an, a, a, an international warrant of arrest, which means they want you. It's not as if, you know, Cameroon as a, 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 as a nation do not have a right to step into another country and arrest somebody. That is an international law. But then, international organizations like the UN, or the, the UN, the UN. yes, African the Union, Council. they have the right, or even those countries that we have these Cameroonians where they are, they have the duty to hand over to Cameroonians because there is a treaty that exists between Cameroon and some and, and these countries. They can do it. They can assist Cameroon because when they keep singing every day, they are ready to assist Cameroon. They are ready. But what are they doing? When they keep singing, looking for a solution. For how long? How far is this solution? Another, that, that, that's another question. How far is this solution? We know the answer. We know what to do. But then we have been putting, into, putting in place cosmetic solutions to the problem. We have been caressing this, the, 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 the crisis without touching the real issue. And the crisis is increasing. We have been addressing wrong issues and the crisis is changing faces. So I think that the international community, if we come together, we can handle this crisis, Vanessa. All right, Derek, you conclude with your point. I would put two things straight. Delay is injustice. Silence is complicity. I'm nerved when I begin to get statements from state personnel like the issue of Northwest and Southwest is an internal affair that can be handled internally by Cameroon. Or time heals all wounds, right? Or the state machinery is slow but steady. Yeah, steady. Uh, those statements are aching. And why I say silence is complicity is because there's a legal maxim which says justice long delayed is justice denied. denied. The international community is delaying the justice process. And by so doing, they are denying the justice that Cameroonians deserve. The blame is totally on them, I would say that. Okay. Because if those on ground are able to perpetrate the acts that they are perpetrating, it's because the international community and is in it. compliance with them. All right. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, our televiewers are still there because the debate just started. A second question. Is there anything the civilian population can do for the crisis? Derek, I remember if you, you think that the population has no contribution in the ending the crisis. The population has no contribution in ending the, cli the crisis because whatever the population could contribute is suicidal. Right? The state would say uh, this, the, the civilians should cooperate with us and be sure that we know precisely where the 
restorationist fighters are and the reality on the ground is when you cooperate with the state and point out where restoration fighters are you become a casualty of war the restoration fighters will come for you if you cooperate with the restoration fighters and point to them how they could get to the military the regular military will come for for you so where do they find themselves they are victims of circumstances they are what we call the casualties of war because when they are killed in the crossfire the only thing Yaoundé will say is they are casualties of war or collateral damage therefore the only contribution that the civilians can have and which i recommend for them is to take to safety there are several ways if it's so difficult for you you stay fit for survival be sure that you're not sickly or you're not gotten by a bullet or something so that you'll be able to run when the time for running comes some time ago i i made a statement i mean running away from a lion is not cowardice right mm -hmm. it's bravery it's courage that is where the the civilians are they are caught between the devil and the deep blue sea how do they rescue themselves because they are the victims here they'll have to sail through the sea probably well if they can swim because as far as i know maybe those closer to the coast in the southwest could swim but not for long mm -hmm. because we're not international swimmers and we just need to prepare our survival kits because without a survival kit you to, know the circumstances so on what, ground what will not be kits? able so to make what, it what are some of those kits there take, take to safety use the free legs that god gave you we know how some of them have taken to safety they are here in uh, the commercial capital they're in Tuwala, they're in yawunde they're everywhere in cameroon even in our borders they are there and that is why no they're food, still alive no shelter nothing that is why so they're how still do they alive. survive they are surviving if we are still talking as at now we are talking they are still alive those who stayed in the ground i tell you a good percentage is history the best solution for a civilian in this crossfire is take to safety take to safety okay mangaven issues uh, you think that the population the civilian population uh, has a role to play in stopping the crisis yes vanessa i think that we should uh, I, I i was listening to a number of women from the southwest region who came out in the streets of boya to march to denounce the atrocities or the violence that is being meted on the the woman folk in relation to this crisis there you don't talk about the recent killings in the northwest and southwest region most of, most most of the of cases the were women and i think that if the population can get up like one man the problem here is not the civilians dying the military dying is a cameroonian the amber boy dying is a cameroonian the civilian dying is a cameroonian so if any death recorded from either camp is a you know it is it is a cameroonian that is being lost actually it mm -hmm. is a, it is a cameroonian that that, that 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 is being lost so i think that the population can stand up like one man and denounce this vow and denounce the crisis actually because when you listen when you listen to the population the the, 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 the local population across the northwest and southwest region everybody is just fed up with this crisis because they cannot live their life again as usual. Some villages have been reduced to not, to nothing completely. Mm -hmm. People are everywhere scattered. And somebody was asking a question, are you sure that the Northwest and Southwest region will still ever come back to what they were as far back as 2015? Because when you look at the images that we have from our various villages, most of our villages in these two regions, you discover that we are some years back they have taken us again mm -hmm. right up to around the 70s, the 60s. Mm -hmm. And you tend to ask the question, those who have escaped, they are not living in Douala because they love the city of Douala. No, they are here because of the condition back home. And as time is going on, they are getting settled in Douala. Are you sure they will still go back? Those who would escape to Nigeria, when it, by the time they get used to the situation, to, to, to the climate, to, 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 to the way of life mm -hmm. out there, are you sure they will still come back? So 
uh, it, it, it is a crisis that has plunged our communities into kind of you know some villages you know like i was saying we are already burnt down we are talking of reconstructing the villages reconstructing are we sure we are going to reconstruct the village the villages right up to 2015 where it was before the crisis began when you look at the intelligentsia you know the population those who are dying the youths do what are we going to do to ever bring them back so i think that the only thing we can do now is the population should stand up denounce the crisis we don't need it again let us come back to our way of life the way we were before this crisis because it is the same question i was asking uh, days back that uh, is the population is are they so-called separatist fighters above the population we don't think that they can be above the population uh, you, or they are the majority they cannot be the majority vanessa because when you look at it they call they they live in the villages the military may not know who is a separatist who is not a separatist uh, uh, who is a separatist fighter who is not a fighter they live in various villages they know that somebody from this family this child this particular person from this family belongs to this group they can identify them but the problem is like uh, uh, mr angalim was saying the population is caught between two fronts when you identify them uh, and the military goes away the, the, the separatist comes for you mm -hmm. and when the military comes back they you know the military the, 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 the separatists they do not have they, they do not have a uniform like the military men so it's difficult to identify who, who is, is a separatist the and that's why when they come back there is general confusion in the village and the village the, 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 the villagers they suffer the effect of the of, 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 of this armed uh, uh, men so i think that they need to denounce it openly i don't think that if they denounce it as a population it is when i denounce it as an individual they come for me mm -hmm. i don't think that the, the separatist fighters will be strong enough to come and gone down the whole village gone down a whole quarter that will stand up and say we, we don't, don't support, support this again, again. Mm -hmm. yes yeah, so i think that it's high time that the population denounce them and it will be a way i think uh, you know a, a, a headway to end uh, this crisis Vanessa. okay thank you very much manga financials derrick as a pan-africanist what are you proposing a solution out of the crisis as a solution out of the crisis the parties already know what they need to do they have been they have been educated over the four years at least when the crisis were getting to a complicated stage on what needs to be done they just need to i mean take the good will to do it i think our problem here is not because there is no solution to our problem the problem is because the solution is not acceptable to the big lions of the game. So our solution lies in the hands of the big lions, the international the community, the various governments involved, and because they are the ones whose voices have to put a clicker into this crisis. So I would say the earlier they take the good heart, to bring peace to the two areas, the better for us all. The better for us all. Thank you very much, uh, Derek and Galim, for coming. It is always a pleasure receiving you in the house. Manga Venatius, uh, thank you for your contribution throughout the week. Thank you, Vanessa. And to you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being faithful in watching Viewpoint on TBS television. Do not forget that a whole team has to mobilize for the week's production. They are always dynamic in their ways. Thanks to McDonald Tombo, Jim Dojoje, thanks to Sandra, Ebude, and of course, uh, thanks to myself, your humble presenter, the Vanessa Shiyong. Do have a blessed weekend in the company of programs on TBS television. Goodbye.